Okay, now you ready? I need you to start over, <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> no problem. So, my name is Hank Brashears. I've been asked to do uh, a little video on the First Station of the Cross, and we are today at the Olive Garden doing this, and uh, if you look at the Gospels, it talks about a place called Gethsemane, which means oil press, which was set up beside an olive uh, grow and the word place in Greek means a garden so here we are at the Olive Garden. Now the first station of the cross is Jesus has just had the Last Supper with his disciples and he has gone to to this Garden of Gethsemane and as we read in Luke uh, earlier in Luke 2 or 22 we learn that uh, it is his normal custom after he's taught for the day in Jerusalem to go out to this garden and today we're actually going to read about his time in the garden. And this is Luke 22, chapter, uh, verses 39 through 46. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he arose from prayer and went back to his disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping, he asked them. Get up and pray so you will not fall into temptation. You know, the, the first question is, what does this passage say to me? And there's actually a couple of things in here. Uh, the first is, uh, Jesus is like Jonah. He is being sent to a place where he really doesn't want to go if he doesn't have to. Uh, but different than Jonah is he is choosing to obey God's will, not his own. So he is knowing that his time is, uh, is near an end. He is uh, going ahead with the plan that God has set forth for him. So I guess the two things there is one, he is following God's will, uh, and, and two, he's going willingly to a place he does not want to go. And again, the, the second question is, what does this event in the Passion story mean to me? And I think it really relates to the first. Jesus is literally going with his friends into the garden to pray as his, his normal uh, actions. And he's, as we look at it, he goes in, he separates himself from his disciples so that he is in a private place a, a little bit away from them. And then we see that he kneels and prays and he asks that, you know, God, if it's possible, take this cup from me. And, and cup is, is a cup of wrath, you know, so he knows that uh, a bitter end is coming but he is willing to go, uh, you know, it's not my will, but it's your will. So that's, you know, I guess a lesson for us. How do we willingly go someplace we don't necessarily want to go, but go because it's God's will that we, that we actually go there. And the third uh, question is, what can we learn from this moment in the life of Jesus? And I think the first thing we can say is uh, that he is obedient to God. He will go where God sends him. Uh, the second thing is that he is listening to God. That, you know, he, he says, that, you know, if it is your will, then take this cup. So uh, I'm listening. You know, if if you got a, a another plan that would work, uh, I'm all open to that right now. But if not, then I'm willing to go where you want me to go. You know, he, he is willingly going to his death on our behalf, and I, and I guess that's what it says to me. When you read this passage and you kind of put yourself there in the garden, what are you seeing? What are you feeling? What's happening? So to me, the feeling is this is not like the last several days where we've been here. Something is going on and, you know, we, we don't know what it is yet. Uh, Jesus apparently does and we're not really privy at this point other than he said he would be betrayed we really don't know what that means uh, until shortly after when the soldiers show up so you know, certainly some trepidation yes you know I, th I think part of it is we we need to understand that Jesus is willingly going to his death for us you know, he, he knows his purpose. He's, he's stated his purpose over and over to the disciples. They haven't understood it. But he does know his purpose, and he is willingly going 
to his death on our behalf. And, and he knows what that's going to entail. And his words of, you know, if possible, take this from me, or tell you, you know, in his humanity, he knows the suffering that he's going to go through for us. Jesus' path to the cross has been going since, uh, since the transfiguration. He has been constantly moving uh, everything towards Jerusalem, towards the cross. And as we go through the next uh, several weeks of, of the Lenten season, we're going to continue to see His journey to the cross and we're going to be following His steps along the way.